So today I want to talk to you about DNA sequencing. So recently the University of Nottingham has invested in some next generation sequencing machines. Um, and essentially this means we can generate huge amounts of DNA sequence data. Well DNA is the stuff that encodes our genetic, which is what makes our genetic material. So if you look at this key here, you can see how we codify DNA. So it has four bases, which we call A, C, T, and G. Um, so all of those would be equal to one base pair. Um, each of these represent one base pair. A thousand base pairs we call a one kilobase. A thousand kilobases is equal to a megabase. And a thousand megabases equals one gigabase. So the way we do DNA sequencing, for example, is to extract the DNA from a cell. So if you imagine this book is our genetic information, a copy or, or of our genetic information. What we do is we take it out, we basically shred it into little tiny pieces um, and read them. And then the problem is, once you've done that, is to reassemble them into a, one single copy if possible. Because um, the order of the base pairs is, is very important for, for, for telling us how the instructions work. Okay? Obviously, we can't actually do chemically, it's impossible to take the instructions in one copy and just sequence through them all in one go. We have to actually chop it into little bits and sequence and read the individual bits and put them back together. Today I'm going to take you through the process of how we do DNA sequencing um, with the new machines, which we have uh, recently installed at the university. Um, essentially you start with an animal, so you know, I'm going to talk about the worms because that's what I work with. So just imagine we take a, a worm or a, a group of worms and essentially we take them, we put them in a tube um, and we put on a solution which allows us to essentially lyse all the cells. It opens up, you grind up the animals, take a grinder, a pestle, and you grind up the cells in here and essentially you get a solution of all the cells. Um, you add a chemical, makes the cells split open, and then you use a series of kind of organic uh, solutions that allow you to separate out the DNA very cleanly from anything else. Okay. Um, during that process, the chromosomes actually get broken up and the bits of DNA get broken up um, to kind of a, a size which is very useful to work with. So it's around 20 kilo, kilobases, which uh, uh, is, is kind of a, a size that's useful to work with. We then take that DNA um, and we sonicate it. We actually use a machine that produces sound waves to break the DNA down in a very controlled way into a size which we need to do the sequencing with. And this machine essentially uses control sound waves and you set the parameters so you get a range of sizes that you're interested in. We then take these little bits of DNA, which are millions and millions of chopped up pieces, and on the ends we add little ligate, li li we ligate on, which is a way of adding other sequences. So we add on little sequences that we know the sequence of onto the ends of each piece. Yep. And the reason we need to do this is because the way the chemistry works on the machine, we need to know some sequence. So the way we do that is just to add it on. Okay. Then we take these um, little bits of DNA and we attach them to beads. Little beads. These beads are one micron in size. That's one thousandth of a millimeter in size. And these bits that we like it on allow us, allow us to attach the DNA to these beads. Yeah. So you can imagine um, that you have these tiny beads in solution with these bits of DNA attached. And the trick here, the really important thing here, is to um, get the amount of beads and DNA, the concentrations of each, the amount of each right. So on average, most of the beads only have one piece of DNA attached. That's really key. Okay? That's something called generating a monoclonal uh, sequencing unit. Okay? Mono is in one, and clonal meaning you can now amplify on this bead. You can basically use enzymes that copy this one piece of DNA um, again and again. So you now have a bead with multiple copies of the same sequence. Okay? So what you've taken is you've taken these millions and millions of fragments of DNA, added them to these beads, and now you have millions of beads, each with multiple copies of just one piece of DNA. So all the copies on each bead are the same. Okay? You then take these beads, so on, on the machine that we use this, we, 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 we use 400 million of these beads on one, on one run. Okay? And essentially, you get a, you get a slide, um, and you just put the beads on the slide, like this. And these beads all have uh, one piece of DNA which has been clonally amplified. Unfortunately, you do get some beads that have no DNA, and some beads that 
got originally got more than one piece of DNA, so those won't work. Then you get a really nice sensitive camera that's looking down on this slide, and this camera basically moves along the slide taking pictures of the beads. At the same time, you have some very clever chemistry which gets washed over the slides cyclically. Um, and what that does is basically add bases to another strand of DNA that's synthesized in parallel to the ones that are on. Okay? Now, as each base gets added, a color fluoresces. Okay? And you have one fluorescence color for each of the base pairs, essentially. So, for example, A might be red, and C might be blue, and T might be green. So as you wash over, each of these beads fluoresces according to the color of the base that's added. Now, because the beads only have one piece of DNA on, the color is always the same. And the camera basically focuses on the beads and takes a picture as the chemistry goes over. And the camera just, wash, just basically goes over the slide, taking pictures of each panel, imaging each bead, and you know the sequence, the next base pair sequence, of this, of this original DNA that you put on the bead. Okay? So what you end up with are short reads of sequence, about 50 base pairs in length, but you get about 400 million of them. So you've taken your book, you shredded it into little pieces, and then you've sequenced it in these little chunks. The problem now is putting it back together. And the way you do that is to buy a really large computer, write some very, very cool programs that are very good at dealing with these little bits and very good at making jigsaw puzzles, and just throw it at the computer and say, right, can you reassemble this for me? OK, so the old way of doing sequencing was also very clever, but you produced a lot less sequence, sequence information. And people still use that. I mean, it's not old way. I mean, people still use it. So it was, it was um, uh, invented by Fred Sanger, which he won his second Nobel Prize. And it's called chain termination sequencing. Um, and just a comparison, the kind of machine, the kind of high-end machine people use to do that kind of sequencing could do 96 samples at a time. Um, and each sample would generate maybe 800 base pairs. And you could, if you ran the machine 24-7, you might generate, um, for example, a megabase um, in a few days, whereas we can generate uh, several gigabases in the same time, so uh, well over 1,000 times as much data. So the original human genome um, took 15 years, so multiple research centers and genome centers around the world, thousands of machines, thousands of researchers, 15 years to sequence. Um, I mean, it's, it's slightly false advertising because obviously they were sequencing it for the first time, so they had to get a really accurate copy and make sure they could fit all the pieces together. And to do that, they made big pieces of DNA which they mapped, actually using different techniques without you doing sequencing. They showed that they mapped. And then they sequenced those bigger pieces so they had a very accurate picture. Um, but that took 15 years. Um, now in the lab uh, down the hall, we can sequence about six human genome equivalents in seven days. So in terms of the amount, in terms of generating the amount of data, obviously there's, a, there's an issue of putting it all together, which is still a problem. And that might take several weeks or several months. Um, but you can see it's a step change in the amount of data and the speed at which we can do things, which has really revolutionized the questions we can ask.